Hello, and thanks for joining this episode of On Brand. Today, we're going to be talking about the role of advertising uh, in influencing consumer behavior and the responsibilities that advertisers have to use that influence as a force for good. I'm Tim Cooper, and I'm Head of Strategic Communications at Density Aegis Network, and I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Harriet Kingaby, who is uh, co-chair of the Conscious Advertising Network, and Anna Easton, who is Global Head of Social Impact at Density Aegis Network. Harriet is currently a Mozilla Fellow, working with Consumers International to map the opportunities and impacts of AI-enhanced advertising. She's also the co-chair of the Conscious Advertising Network, which is an industry initiative uh, that believes it's time for industry ethics to catch up with the technology of modern advertising. Anna is our Head of Social Impact, and she's also a Senior Associate at the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, and previously she worked at BT. So to kick us off, I'd like to uh, ask a question uh, to both of you. Um, what role do you think advertising plays in influencing consumer behavior? Is it more or less than we might care to admit. Harriet, do you have a view? Sure. I mean, there's no doubt that brilliant advertising can make you laugh. It can make you remember it. I remember the advertising that was on the tube this morning from monday.com really played into the way that um, Londoners think about London. Um, but I think there's also a flip side to that, which is some of the uh, perhaps uh, the, the newer forms of advertising um, we, we know that consumers find them annoying and we, find, we know that they may not be as effective as perhaps we would hope they, they are, in all honesty. Um, and I think that there's some work to be done looking at, that, at some of those newer forms of advertising and looking at you know, just, just you know, kind of how necessary some, some of them are, how, how great some of the formats are for the people that we're trying to reach. Um, and I think there's another issue with um, kind of political advertising. We know that um, micro-targeted uh, kind of adverts that people have no real uh, kind of visibility of um, that only show a particular message to a particular person um, could be uh, you know kind of could could be could be effective in in some some uh, interesting ways. So I think the answer is it's a very nuanced conversation um, and uh, one that's constantly evolving. Anna, what's your take on the uh, the influence of advertising on consumer behaviour? Well, I think for a very long time, probably about seventy years, the focus of advertising has been purely to sell more stuff. Um, and there is a famous quote from David Ogilvy, which said, "Nothing should get in the way of the industry selling more stuff." But of course, that that vision is at odds um, on a planet where resources are contended, um, and we've had to rethink the fundamental role that advertising plays. And I don't think we can underestimate the influence that we have. So today's advertising is incredibly sophisticated. It's built on data and insights and nudge theory. We have behavioral psychologists who work in marketing and advertising teams. Um, and really the role is to, is to get people to change the way that they think feel or act. Um, a lot of people don't actually realize why they do that. So if you walk into a shop and Tim, somebody said to you, why did you buy that particular washing powder? You probably have to stop and think and question. A lot of people, most consumers when asked, don't really know why they've made that choice. Um, and that's how subtle the effect can be. And that's why we do really need to think about that influence um, and then about how we use that to affect really positive change. So it's on, that, on that point, I mean, what responsibilities do you think uh, advertisers have to make sure that they're using this influence for, for positive reasons and, and in a way that's in the interest of the consumer, not necessarily in the commercial interests of the brand? Harriet, do you have a view? Well, I think you've phrased it beautifully in that we've got to be thinking consumer first. Advertising funds the internet as it stands, and with that great power comes great responsibility. So it funds the brilliant journalism that helps us form our opinions, but also we can find our advertising appearing in not so great places. So we know that advertising has been found against terrorist content, against hate speech. And I really think that we as a collectively as an industry need to be thinking about that and, and kind of thinking about, well, what is the internet that, uh, you know, kind of what pit, bits of, where, where should our money go to fund the bits that we really want to see? Um, and we're seeing movements towards that. I think it's really, really encouraging. Um, but yeah, effectively, if we are going to um, kind of have that responsibility, then then I think we need to take that. The, we need to take it seriously. 
Anna, what's your take on some of the responsibilities that advertisers face? Well, I think it's very interesting. Harriet talks about political advertising. And of course, she's absolutely right. Advertising is used to promote political campaigns. It's also used to promote public health campaigns. So I don't think we should forget the fact that actually today, organisations do a huge amount of work um, on issues like cancer, on issues like malaria, um, on issues like diabetes, to get people to understand more about the conditions they have and potentially how they manage them. So there is huge power and work already going on to actually help individuals. And um, from Dentsu's perspective, we, we work with Greenpeace, we work with World Wildlife Funds, we've done a huge amount of work on things like Our Planet, for example. So I think already there are really powerful examples of where we actually think about how we can act in the best interests of society and the environment and put people first. And to that point about examples, are there any brands that you feel are doing a really good job of this at the moment? Um, I think lots of brands are doing some very interesting work. There's some really interesting examples within um, fashion, for example, and also, um, interestingly, um, the, the drinks industry. Diageo is doing a huge amount of work to actually normalise the perception that we have of um, gender, um, of um, ethnicity, of, of disability, for example, by actually featuring a wide range of people in their advertising. Um, and actually that resonates really well with their, with their customer base because it's, it's truly authentic. Diageo have been working in that area for a long time. Um, so we see a lot of fashion brands um, on the high street, for example, River Island has done some brilliant stuff, um, labels off clothes, which I think is a really, one, a really brilliant campaign around diversity and inclusion. Um, I also love the work Burger King have done with the Impossible Whopper. We can't not mention that. I think that's been phenomenal in terms of transitioning people towards vegetarianism. But probably my favourite most recently, and one I'm really proud our team at Carrot were involved in, um, is the work the Cadbury's have done um, by very simply taking off all the words on the wrappers of the Cadbury's chocolate bars to highlight the fact that aged people in the UK often go five days without speaking to somebody. So that's very simple, but hugely powerful. And the profits for that campaign actually go to Age UK. Harriet, you talked about um, the role that brands can play in ensuring that mm. Uh, technology and advertising is used ethically, but what about the role of consumers? Um, Anna, do you think consumers have a role in terms of keeping pace with the latest tech developments and helping ensure that they're used ethically? I think consumers instinctively keep pace with technology developments. Um, we live in an age of the digital um, savvy native essentially where children are actually born knowing how to operate an iPhone before they can walk so I think consumers adapt um, they adapt to the different channels and technologies that we introduce whether that's augmented reality or virtual reality um, the question is um, whether or not they really understand how the data is being used and I think Harriet's already covered this and clear we have a responsibility to do so much more to inform them and I think the more informed they are, the more sophisticated they will become and the more able they will be able to control their environment. Um, when it comes to ethics though, I think we do need to recognise that actually ethical behaviour in the online world is the same as ethical behaviour in the offline world. And, um, you know, it's the responsibility of the collective to really monitor that. So we need to recognise, we need to stay informed. Consumers need to recognise when things aren't working the way they should be, not be afraid to call it out, and then hold people who aren't behaving the way we need them to accountable. That's very good. And um, switching gears a little bit, if I may, to talk about um, environmental performance. We've already talked about sort of data ethics and the role of technology and advertising to be used ethically, but um, there's also clearly a, an onus on brands to communicate how well they're performing uh, on some of their environmental targets. Um, in that vein, Anna, can you tell us a little bit more about the work that we're doing with Brands for Good? Yes. Um, so Brands for Good, that is very exciting. It was launched in April at Sustainable Brands. It's a pre-competitive collaboration by nine organisations, including Dentsu um, and eight household brands. I say pre-competitive because we have people like Nestle and Pepsi collaborating at the table to look at solutions. Um, and what we're focused on is, is how we make that shift 
um, how we shift consumers towards a more sustainable lifestyle. So what we see at the moment is that um, people really have an appetite. They want to do the right thing. The most searched for term on Pinterest is actually how to, you know, sustainable lifestyles and how to do things more sustainably or buy more sustainably. But um, but they don't necessarily um, brands don't necessarily see that translate um, into purchasing decisions. So what we want to do is help equip consumers so that they understand. So there's nine um, consumer behaviors that we've identified, sustainable behaviors. These are things like reduce, recycle, reuse, eat more plant-based food, and we're trying to embed those behaviors at the heart of, of brand and marketing strategies. And that's quite interesting, and I touch on that because I think we've always looked at consumer need states, and we've always looked at what brands uniquely have to offer. But that externality in terms of what the world's need hasn't always been embedded. So I think that's the shift, and that's what's really exciting. And, and sort of taking a step back a bit, do you think that there's now more external scrutiny on the role that advertising can play in terms of um, positively you know, bringing about some of the sustainable lifestyles that we want to see? Yes, absolutely, because I think people are recognising the influence that the sector has um, to actually change behaviour. And really importantly, I think for the first time, people realise that actually when we talk about climate change, we talk about the Anthropocene, that actually that is down to people. It's down to individual behaviour and people need to affect change. So we need to do that and we need to do that really quickly. And I think there's been activist groups that have called that out as well. So Extinction Rebellion is quite famous for standing up and actually saying to the media industry that, you know, we know, we know you have a role to play here. Um, and we need to change. So I think there's pressure coming from regulators, from financial institutions, from the brands and the organisations that we work with, but also from activist groups. Harriet, would you, would you agree with that? Yes, I would definitely agree with that. I think it's surprised and delighted me that over the last six months I've heard climate change and sustainability discussed more at advertising events than I've ever heard before. Um, that makes me, you know, that makes me really happy. I'll start there. Um, I think um, as well as the content that we produce and the influence that we that, that we have as an industry to help people understand and, and to, you know, kind of really partake in sustainable behaviours, we've also got to be thinking about where our media is placed. Um, so we know that um, we, we, we can find advertising next to climate denial online and it, you know, that can be troublesome if you're a brand and you've got fantastic sustainability aspirations and you're getting the message out there. But if you're if your content is appearing next to climate change denial online, then you, you've got conflicting priorities. So I think um, we're definitely seeing um, more scrutiny of our industry, and I think, but we're also seeing movement, and we're also seeing organisations within the industry recognising that there's stuff that they can do, uh, and that there's they can use their influence and and in a really positive way. So I think you know. I think we're going to see much more joined up thinking in terms of media spend as well as content in some of these areas. And just to add to that, that was really evident in New York in September when Climate Week ran concurrently to Ad Week. And I think for the first time we saw some of the messaging and the executives travelling between the two. Mm -hmm. And the industry, including, including Dense Aegis Network, signed up to a climate pledge um, to commit to net zero emissions, which I think is hugely powerful. I don't think we would have seen that last year. And, and, and on this theme of, of scrutiny um, and sort of bringing it back to consumers, do you think that younger consumers have higher expectations of, of brands and the positive role that they should play in society? Anna? Well, I was with Alan Jope, who's the CEO of Unilever in New York, um, talking about exactly this. Um, they have done some research at Unilever, which segments their customer base by demographic. Um, and whilst baby boomers are less inclined to make change, um, for Gen Z, it is the only purchasing decision that matters. So I think we are seeing a massive shift, and that does ladder down. So I think for millennials, it's 70%, but for Gen Z, it's, it's the only purchasing decision. So I think, yes, absolutely, the next generation are calling for change. And um, they're not just calling for a new type of product set or a portfolio set, they're actually expecting brands to take action. And so um, an another survey we looked at, 78% of consumers expect a brand or an organisation to actually have a proactive stance on a social or environmental issue. And 64% of people will actually stop buying, will boycott that brand if they don't agree with their stance on a social issue. So, so that's really powerful. Harriet, does that sort of analysis chime with your sort of experience as well? Yes, I think, I think that younger people really do want brands to... Um, 
want to buy from brands that chime with their values. And I think, as Anna was saying, they are you know prepared to you know prepared to boycott those that don't. And I I do think you know, as an industry we're really we're really obsessed with with the new and the new generation. And I think we do well to really think about this when we're when we're planning what we want to do, how we want to communicate, what advice we're giving our clients. Because you know I think I think it's an exciting time. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And we've um, we've covered quite a few bases today around. Um, the role of technology in advertising, uh, the influence that advertisers have and the responsibilities to, to use that positively, uh, as well as communicate progress on, on things like environmental targets. Um, so it's kind of bring it all together and to sort of make it, make it real for people. Um, last question would be, you know, what are some of the practical things that, that people watching um, can do to start encouraging brands to behave more responsibly? Harriet, what's your take? So from a, I think from a surveillance and a data ethics kind of standpoint, I think, um, I think it is important to be informed at, at, this, at this point in time. There is some great literature out there around kind of data privacy. Mozilla is doing some, putting some great content out there that explains stuff. Um, they've just released a, a guide that looks at uh, products you can buy for Christmas and how creepy they are on a scale to not creepy at all to very creepy, um, which I'd advise everyone to have a look at. So I think being informed is, is powerful. I think... Also, as well, and I think if you know, if politely asking your your favourite brand if they're a member of Can, obviously you know we'd love. But I think also on the flip side, we've got this, we have got this collective responsibility and this collective stewardship that I do think we need to we need to think about because as individual consumers, it can be quite difficult to make some of those choices that might leave you more protected, or might you know kind of minimise the amount of data collection that happens around you. So you know, I think. Consumers can go can go so far by being informed, but I think as an industry we must also you know be thinking and changing. That's great, Anna. What's your sort of final practical takeaway? Practical takeaway: um, I think for consumers, don't underestimate the power that you have. So a decade ago, two thirds of touch points were brands pushing information at consumers, but today two thirds of that comes from consumers themselves. So it's the recommendations on social media. So where you see brands acting responsibly or whether you, you know, where you like the products that they're selling, whether sustainable, then you raise your voice and share your opinion. That's, that's one way. Um, and the second thing is purchasing. So, you know, if when you choose to buy a more sustainable product or a plant-based burger versus a beef-based burger, you're sending a very strong demand signal to the brands, and that is when we will really start to see them accelerate and shift their behaviour. Fantastic. A very positive note on which to end. And uh, Harriet, Anna, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, thank you for watching um, the latest episode of On Brand. Do join us for the next one. Uh, if you want to find out more information about some of the discussion today, um, do have a look at the Conscious Advertising Network website. Um, also, if you go to the Density Regis Network website, you can find out more about our social impact uh, strategy and programs. Thank you very much for joining and hope to see you next time.